The original Hamilton Khaki Fields Murph, the one that was in Interstellar itself, came in at 42 millimeters. Now, it was a nice watch, but a lot of people in the community, including myself, said, it just needs to be that little bit smaller. It's a little bit too chunky. And we let Hamilton know a couple of years ago, and we hoped that they would listen. And Hamilton, they listened. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison as always and today we are talking about the Khaki Field Murph watch. The new Khaki Field Murph watch that comes in at 38 millimeters in diameter instead of the previous version which was 42 millimeters in diameter. And before we start, I need to I need to apologize for for this. The studio at Chisholm Hunter is going through some upgrades, so for the time being, you're in the house. You know, the thing I love most about Hamilton as a brand is their ability to have fun and to create something different, to create something a little bit wacky and not be afraid of what people say. When you look at the bigger brands, the bigger conglomerates, they tend to play it a little bit safer. They change the occasional color, but that's pretty much all you get. Whereas Hamilton do things that are really, really special, really unique. And this was evident in the last Murph watch when they actually put Eureka in Morse code on the watch. That is just genius. Another thing I love is their ability to listen to the watch community. And that is literally what this this watch is. We asked for a smaller version of the Murph and that is what they gave us. Now I actually met up with the CEO of Hamilton in Zermatt. It was about three or four days ago, you might have seen it on my personal channel, and I had a conversation with him about the watches that he brings out. And a direct source of inspiration for Hamilton is the watch community. We are heard. And for a watch nerd, for a watch lover, that's all you really want to be. But anyways, enough of my waffle, let's get into the specs of this watch because that is, that is why you're here at the end of the day. It comes in at 38 millimeters in diameter in comparison to the 42 millimeters of the predecessor, the original Murph watch. I would say this wears a little bit more chunky though. It is quite a chunky watch for such a small watch. And I think that's because of the elongated lugs to start with. And also the fact that they've used polished metal on the bezel. It gives it that little bit more of a wrist presence. With that said, it does wear so much nicer on the wrist than the 42 mil in my opinion. I have 6.5 inch wrist, so I'm a little bit slimmer. So this is more my sizing. The thickness of this watch comes in at 11.10 millimeters, as you can see just here. Now, I wouldn't say this is particularly slim, but I wouldn't say it was large. I'd say it kind of sits on the medium end of the thickness scale, which isn't a bad thing. It still sits nicely under a shirt cuff. And for an automatic watch, it's not overly thick. The lug to lug comes in at 44.70 millimeters. So it does have quite elongated lugs and they seem to wrap around the wrist quite nicely. And actually the leather strap fits wonderfully in between these lugs. So I'm, I'm quite a fan of that. When you actually look at the bezel of this watch or the limited bezel, it is in polished stainless steel and the case is also in polished stainless steel. Now the crown is a little bit more bulky than you would expect. It's a little bit thicker than you would expect for a field watch, but it's very, very easy to turn. And I wouldn't say it's overly big. Like it doesn't bend, it doesn't dig into your wrist when you bend it. It, it, it kind of is quite comfortable. But the one thing I would say about this polished bezel is although polished steel looks wonderful when you reflect it in the light, I'm just reflecting it at the moment and it picks up and catches the light just beautifully. It does pick up wear and tear. It picks up scratches a lot more easy than brushed metal. So having polished metal on a khaki watch, which is technically, technically meant to be an outdoors watch, it just doesn't really make sense to me. However, what does make sense is this is a tribute to the original Murph watch that was in Interstellar. And obviously the original Murph watch had those polished or that polished bezel. So it kind of makes sense in that way, but the fact that it's branded as a khaki fuels watch, that's where the kind of gray area begins for me. The strap on this model comes in black leather and it has white stitching to either side, just like the original Murph watch. It's very, very similar. There's only a couple of differences really. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of leather watches. They're just too vintage. And I just feel like I'm a bit too young for that at the moment. I mean, I'm only 25. I'm not quite in the vintage stage just yet, but that's just personal opinion. I think that I would quite like to see this on a NATO. I'm not sure if it would go because those lugs are quite big, but if you guys have any pictures of this with the NATO one, please fire them into the Instagram Chisholm Hunter Watches. I'd, I'd really like to see that. 
Now, before we move any further, before we get into the beautiful face of this watch, I want to talk a little bit about Interstellar. I have no doubt that most of you watching this video, if you're looking at the Murph watch, have seen Interstellar. And you have been on that journey through the galaxy with Matthew McConaughey himself. Now, there's no doubt that the Murph watch played a huge part in this, in this movie. And actually, it was integral to the storyline of the whole movie, to the plot of the whole movie. Without spoiling anything, the watch could tell Morse code. But an interesting detail about this watch is Christopher Nolan doesn't like to use any CGI. So he created this watch with Hamilton. He had a say on what it looked and felt like, but also he had a component behind the watch that would tick the hand into Morse code. So if you look at any scenes of the watch, it's always from front on because there's a big component behind it and someone was actually doing the Morse code through the machine. That's a pretty awesome detail. The fact that Christopher Nolan had a direct impact on the look, the feel, the style of this watch, and that Hamilton were so glad to accommodate it, just, it really hit it home to me how amazing Hamilton are at kind of taking risks and making something different. This is a hybrid of a ton of Hamilton lines. It's not technically a Hamilton khaki field. If you actually look at it, it has a different case, it has a different uh, strap. There's tons of different components of Hamilton all coming into the one watch and being merged to make the one watch. And I just think that's pretty cool. Anyways, I digress massively. The face of this watch comes in a jet black and it has beige hands and indices or large numerals. Now it's very, very readable and remains kind of field watch in that retrospect when you look at the face. It's a very readable, vintage looking face. Something that I picked up on about the face of this watch and the beige color in particular is I think, and this is just me spitballing here, so <laughs> let me know if you think I'm full of rubbish or not. I think that Christopher Nolan used this color on purpose to show the kind of sandy texture of the world. Now, if you've seen the movie without spoiling it, you'll know that there was tons of dust and sandstorms. And I think that this color relates to that. Also, as well as that, it gives it a really nice vintage feel, but I just think that's what Christopher Nolan's idea was when he used that color. The Hamilton logo is positioned beautifully at 12 o'clock, of course, in that beige color again. And at the six o'clock mark, you have the khaki automatic because this is an automatic watch. And that brings me on nicely to the movement of this watch. But before we get onto the movement, remember that Chisholm Hunter are authorized retailers of Hamilton watches. And this bad boy is in stock at Chisholm Hunter. So click the link below to shop now. The movement on this watch is the Caliber H10. This is an ETA movement and it's automatic with a central rotor. It beats at a frequency of 21,600 VPH. It has 25 joules, an 80 hour power reserve and a Nivacron balance spring that is resistant to magnetic fields. I know what you guys are gonna say here. I know you guys are gonna say, well, why doesn't it have uh, in-house movement. Firstly, an in-house movement would make the price of this watch rise. Secondly, I just want to say that I don't mind ETA movements. I don't mind Salita movements. I don't mind movements that aren't in-house. These movements are normally tried and tested and are powerhouses of movements. I would rather a brand used an ETA movement that used an in-house movement that maybe wasn't as good. And these ETA movements have been tried beyond belief. They are in thousands of different watches. And if there was a fault in one of them, there would be a fault in all of them, but there's not. So they're good movements. I have to say, I'm a huge fan of Interstellar as a movie. I've maybe seen that movie six or seven times minimum. It is fantastic and it will go down in history as one of my favorite movies of all time. But what I'm an even bigger fan of is the fact that Hamilton are listening to the watch community. We told them that we wanted something and they gave us it. That is very rare and that's something that Hamilton should be proud of. Thank you very much for stopping by the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And again, I need to apologize about, about this. Um, I am I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You should actually see the other side of the room. I, I'm not even going to show you the other side of the room because it's just a mess. It's, it's really awful. Please subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll be back in a couple of days.